සියලුම SLT Mobitel සේවාවන් My SLT app එක හරහා කරගන්න. සියලුම SLT Mobitel සේවාවන් My SLT app එක හරහා කරගන්න. දසන කාන්ති චූර්ණය සහිත ලීවර් ආයුෂ් දන්තාලේපය දත්වල ඇති ප්‍රශ්න 10ක් වලකයි. Back at home, former President Gotabe Rajapaksa returns to Sri Lanka after nearly two months overseas. Debt treatment, the Paris Club of Creditor Nations expressed their readiness to start debt relief process for Sri Lanka, while China says it stands ready to work with Sri Lanka's creditor nations and international financial institutions. Recovery for stability. Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe, says Sri Lanka will see a lot more stability with high economic growth and low inflation after the country begins receiving funds from the IMF. All this and much more coming up tonight, this Saturday, the 3rd of September, 2022. Vim Smart Pet Pole. From Ada Derana. This is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. And I'm in the Variamwatha joining you tonight on First at Nine. After nearly two months away from Sri Lanka, former President Gotabe Rajapaksa returned home last night. He was in Thailand for nearly a month after leaving Singapore, where he stayed on short visa for a month. The former president who arrived in the country at around 11.30 p.m. aboard a Singapore Airlines flight was taken to a state bungalow in Colombo amidst heavy security. President Secretary Samanek Anayaka said that former president Rajapaksa is accorded privileges and benefits as per the President's Entitlement Act. After a month and nine days overseas, Former President Gotabe Rajapaksha returned to the island late last evening. The former president who arrived at the Bandaranaika International Airport from Thailand via Singapore Airlines flight was greeted by parliamentarians of the Sri Lanka Pozjana Peramuna. <laughs> He left the Katunayak airport amidst heavy security during the early hours of today. He will be living in a state bungalow in Colombo 7. Gotabe Rajapaksha left Sri Lanka on the 13th of July when mass protests stormed the president's house in Colombo and several key other public administrative buildings after months-long demonstrations demanding his immediate resignation. The then president reached the Maldives on 13th of July with the First Lady Ayoma Rajapaksha and two security officials in a military plane. He subsequently travelled to Singapore on a Saudi Airlines flight and reached the Changi International Airport on 14th of July. During his temporary stay in Singapore, Rajapaksha submitted his letter of resignation from the office of the President to speak of Parliament Mahindya Pabe Vardhana officially stepping down from the post he was elected to, securing close to 53% of the public mandate in the presidential election of 2019. After remaining in Singapore for a month of short stay visa, the 73-year-old former President flew to Thailand temporary after being granted visa for 90 days due to his diplomatic passport. With his return to Sri Lanka last night, Many parliamentarians, including former President Mahinda Rajapaksha, called at the state bungalow where former President Gotabe Rajapaksha will be residing. The Paris Club, a group of creditor nations whose objective is to find workable solutions to payment problems faced by debtor nations, has expressed a readiness to start the debt relief process for Sri Lanka. 
issuing a statement. The Paris Club members welcomed the staff level agreement concluded between Sri Lankan authorities and the IMF for a 48 month arrangement under the extended fund facility. They say the agreement represents an important step to restore macroeconomic stability and public debt sustainability in Sri Lanka. The group noted that the IMF's assessment for the need for a debt treatment in the context of the IMF program and assured that they are ready to start the debt treatment process for Sri Lanka. The group reiterated its willingness to coordinate with non-Paris club official bilateral creditors to provide necessary financing assurances in a timely manner and to ensure fair burden sharing as already proposed to the largest other official bilateral creditors. Paris Club says they remain at the disposal of Sri Lankan authorities and non-Paris Club official bilateral creditors to further discuss the next steps of the debt treatment process for Sri Lanka. Now, China says it stands ready to work with Sri Lankan creditor nations and international financial institutions to help the island ease debt burden and to realize sustainable development in the long term. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Liajing, speaking in Beijing, said China will continue to play a positive role in supporting Sri Lanka's response to the current difficulties. The remarks came a day after Sri Lanka declared a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund. At the regular press briefing of the Chinese Foreign Ministry yesterday, its spokesperson Xiao Lijian said China has paid close attention to the difficulties and challenges faced by Sri Lanka and have provided support towards Sri Lanka's socio-economic development to the best of its capacity. He said China supports relevant financial institutions in consultation with Sri Lanka for proper solutions. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson added that they are ready to work with relevant countries and international financial institutions to continue to play a positive role in supporting Sri Lanka's response to current difficulties and efforts to ease debt burden with a view to realizing sustainable development in the island nation. Earlier this week too, after Sri Lanka secured a staff level agreement with the IMF, the Chinese mission in Colombo immediately expressed their readiness to find a proper way to handle Sri Lanka's matured debt related to China and to help overcome current difficulties faced by the country. The spokesperson of the Chinese mission in Colombo said that Chinese financial institutions had reached out to Sri Lankan authorities as soon as the government announced a suspension on international debt payments back in April 2002. The spokesperson added they hope Sri Lanka will work actively with China in a similar spirit to work out a feasible solution. The delegation of the European Union in Sri Lanka meanwhile welcomes the staff level agreement between the International Monetary Fund and Sri Lankan authorities. Taking to its official Twitter handle, the EU in Colombo said they look forward to continuing cooperation with Sri Lanka on public finance management and towards a green economy, including export industries. Last month, during a meeting with President Ranu Wickrama Singha, ambassadors representing EU countries urged Sri Lankan authorities to devote special attention to three key ongoing processes the GSP+, Plus, International Monetary Fund and the Human Rights Council. The envoys expressed hope that concrete steps will be taken by the Sri Lankan government to make these processes a success. Now, Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, says Sri Lanka will start to see a lot more stability with high economic growth, low inflation, low fiscal deficits and low debt after the country begins receiving funds from the IMF disbursements. Speaking to other Derana, Dr. Virasinghe said he is confident in achieving macroeconomic targets set for 2022 beyond in the interim budget and in the upcoming budget for 2023. He also offered an explanation on the proposed Monetary Act saying it will provide no space for the Treasury to arbitrarily print money.
We'll bring you that story in a while. But before that, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa comments Sri Lanka reaching a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund to secure 29 billion US dollars in bailout. Addressing media yesterday, Premadasa said Sri Lanka will be able to move ahead progressively upon fulfillment of conditions set out by the IMF as well as eradication of fraud and corruption. අපේ රට ඉතාමත්ම ඛේදනීය තත්ත්වයකට ඇදවැටී තිබෙන මොහොතක මේ වන විට ජාත්‍යන්තර මූල්‍ය අරමුදලේ ස්ටාෆ් අග්‍රීමන්ට් එක ඒකඟතාවය අවබෝධතාවය බිහිවීම පිළිබඳව විපක්ෂ නායකවරයා හැටියටත් රටේ පුරවැසියෙක් හැටියටත් අපි අවංකවම සතුටු වෙනවා අපි අවබෝධ කරගන්නට ඕන මේ ස්ටාෆ් ලෙවල් අග්‍රීමන්ට් එක හරහා රටට සහන ලැබෙන කොන්දේසි ගණනාවක් තිබෙනවා ඒ කොන්දේසි සම්පූර්ණ කිරීම තුල විශේෂයෙන්ම දූෂණය වංචාව හොරකම ඉවත් කිරීම තුල රටක් හැටියට අපිට හොඳ ප්‍රගතිශීලී ගමනක් යන්නට අවස්ථාව ලැබෙනවා ඒ වගේම රටේ ආර්ථික ප්‍රශ්න විසඳන්නට නම් ජනාධිපතිතුමා මුදල් ඇමතිතුමා අග්‍රාමාත්‍යතුමා ඒ වගේම මහ බැංකුවේ අධිපතිතුමා මේ අය අන්‍යෝන්‍ය විශ්වාසයක එකමතු භාවයකින් කටයුතු කරන්නට ඕනේ and now we take a look at uh, governor of the central bank dr nandalal virasinghe's comments on how sri lanka's uh, macroeconomic uh, targets will be achieved with the, the uh, imf disbursements being received in sri lanka through the interim budget and as well as, as part of an imf proposal a new central bank act was proposed how is this expected to strengthen regulatory oversight in the country this in fact will strengthen both central bank independence and autonomy in formulating monetary policy and also in maintaining financial stability and also this will help for us to establish formally a monetary policy framework based on inflation targeting framework that's a one of the key reforms does this also include political independence as well this will strengthen the independence in terms of central bank ability to prevent what you call monetary financing in simple terms which is called money printing that has been a key issue the central bank has been having in the past on the basis of fiscal dominance when your treasury is unable to finance their fiscal deficit to market sources then central bank was kind of compelled to fill that gap by printing money the new act this will be prohibited can we actually achieve the targets set in the budget and so this is whole idea of the targets and policies and measures announced in the budget a couple of days ago and also the budget measures that will be announced in the november budget for the next year and next couple of years will contain the fiscal policies in addition on the monetary policy side we also have certain policies that we will be conducting together with mainly the monetary policy fiscal policy and also some of the structural reforms so we are confident that we will be meeting the targets that we set ourselves to stabilize the economy and then for a period of time reach higher level of economic growth and also with less debt going forward another thing that the president had mentioned in his interim budget was that expect the country to make a primary surplus by 2025 would sri lanka actually be able to make that target realizable as a key fiscal target and that is why there are revenue measures being introduced in this budget there will be more measures in next budget what are the immediate challenges do you think sri lanka will have to face in the short term here next step is to approach formally and negotiate with our all the creditors and obtain financial assurance which indicates that they are willing to cooperate and provide a relief that we are asking from the creditors on our debt service payments over the next several years what are the other commitments the central bank has to make with regard to the imf bailout package only commitment that we have is to curtail inflation and also to build up external resources in foreign exchange with the central bank how are we going to achieve that there are certain measures we have to relax the exchange rate and allow more flexibility is there any a positive message that can be given to the people that will come out of this crisis better even before we reach and establish the agreement we have made some progress we need to make a lot more progress going forward to stabilize economy there still will be some difficulties until we start getting disbursement from the imf in between i am confident that we should be able to manage the situation and make it even improvements until that period and after that period we are going to see a lot more stability and high growth low inflation low fiscal deficit low debt or we will be reaching in that direction and come out of this crisis and stabilize economy next year upward tariff revision for telecom services details after this break 
කාලගුණය කොහොම වුණත් රයිනෝ නම් වහලට සේෆ් තමයි මුළු ගෙදරම රයිනෝ සිමෙන් රූෆිං ෂීට්ස් දැන් යු නෝ රයිනෝ ඇයි නෝ බිග් 3 Welcome back. The Telecommunications Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka has approved an upward tariff revision for all mobile fixed line, broadband and additional services and pay TV services. The tariff hike will come into effect from the 5th of September 2022. Accordingly, the charges for mobile fixed and broadband services will be increased by 20%. These charges meanwhile for pay TV services will be raised by 25%. The decision was taken due to soaring operational costs caused by continuous depreciation of the Sri Lankan rupee against the dollar. The TRCS so further said that the value added tax for telecommunication services and pay TV services will be increased from 12% to 15% effective from the 5th Now in your international business segment global food prices fell for a fifth month in a row in a sign that one of the main pressures pushing up the cost of living around the world could ease the UN's food price index fell 138 in August and is now lower than it was before Russia's invasion of Ukraine the countries were both major exporters of crops including sunflower oil corn and wheat The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization said July's UN-backed deal to reopen Ukrainian ports has eased cereal and vegetable oil prices. That means more supplies have been able to reach international markets. Russia's main gas pipeline to Europe will not reopen as planned adding to concerns about energy supplies this winter. Europe accused Russia of using its gas supplies to blackmail Europe and the Ukraine conflict which Moscow denies continuously. Energy prices have soared since Russia invaded Ukraine and scarce supplies could push up costs even further. There are growing fears that families in the EU will be unable to afford the cost of heating this winter. Russia supplied the EU with 40% of its natural gas last year. Germany, Europe's largest economy, was the largest importer in 2021, followed by Italy. President Ranil Wickremesinghe says a country cannot operate without an independent authority or a judiciary addressing the 156th celebration of Sri Lanka police he said that parliament was protected during mass protests in July due to efforts of Sri Lanka police and the Sri Lanka armed forces personnel 156th anniversary celebration of Sri Lanka police was held today at the police park under the patronage of president Ranil Wickremesinghe स्वाधीन अधिकार उल्लाघने 
अद में प्रजातंत्र वादे ने ये अवस्था विधि पार्लिमेंट तो आरक्षा होने में युद्ध हम दावाई पुलिसी एंगुई ये आरक्षा क्रांत क्रिया कर पुनी सा ते ये वड़ा काटू तो कर पु में तने इन्ना इन पुलिस नील दारी इंटा अपि विशेष एम प्रणाम या इमिकरांट वुमन एंड दैट रैप्स अप टुनाइट्स एडिशन ऑफ़ फर्स्ट एट 